Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at Kronos Coin, Crypto.com, the native coin to Crypto.com that is. Um, basically recently we looked at five reasons why Crypto.com could go up in value over the upcoming years and why we think it is potentially a good coin in some aspects and today we're going to be taking a look at the flip side as promised and why we think Crypto.com could go down in value and what are the negatives of Crypto.com right now. So firstly let me say we are not financial advisors on this channel we are not offering financial advice everything should be fact checked and information may change over time now crypto.com as we know is the native or it's one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges out there they sponsor f1 they sponsor ufc all these big events now their native coin which is recently rebranded to chronos um, helps run the whole ecosystem uh, of the app you know you can um get cash back in Kronos coin, you can get rebates, you can stake it, you can do so many things with the with the coin. Now, what has actually happened in recent months is that they've adopted mass cutbacks. Now, probably, obviously, the peak here is around the 11th, 24th, 2021. This was an insane peak. Then it kind of leveled out around here, which is still, you know, four or five times increases um, from previous, previous points. However, it was around here at the start of 2022 or April when things turned very south, Crypto.com, when they started announcing cash uh, cutbacks on the Visa card, more cutbacks, then earn rate cutbacks, and then just a negative uh, kind of bull market entrance, really. To the point where if we now take a look at their all-time price history, if we scroll up right here, we're going to go all. You know, they're actually kind of, they've been higher three other occasions. Um so today we're going to take a look at why this has happened, what are the negatives going forward for Crypto.com and essentially why you might be bearish on it. So firstly, the Visa cards, as I talked about in another video coming out soon, they were a huge reason why you should hold Crypto.com coin. They were a huge reason why you should invest in Crypto.com and use the app and spend with the card that Crypto.com give. After they made the cutbacks of reducing the CRO reward, reward rates, putting monthly caps on the spending, cashback rates, um, and reducing the Spotify and Netflix rebates to six months instead of forever. It really does reduce the incentive heavily to get a Crypto.com Visa card. And they also had 10% staking rewards on the coins that you stake to get the card. That's now gone as well. So, and the Frosted Rose Gold and Icy White and Obsidian, they're possible to get. But not many people, you're not your average Joe investor would go, oh yeah, let me try and save 30k or 300k for the card. So looking at the lower tier cards, they're now not very useful. Well, they are, but nowhere near, they're like 20% as useful as they once were, in my opinion. Especially when the likes of Binance are releasing a card, Plutus are still pumping out rewards, and your general day-to-day -day bank is offering 1% cashback. There's a lot of things now that are competing with this Visa card. And it's in a time when there's more competition by cutting back, I believe that reducing the incentive to get the card is just all bad timing. So lower incentive to get the card means lower demand for CRO coin. If there's lower demand for CRO coin, then supply stays the same. Economics suggests price goes down. How does the price go up? High demand. But if you don't have good rewards, then you know, you're not going to be super incentivized to to get the card. I know they've got a lot of people on the card already, but I know so many people that are unstaking and going from Obsidian to Rose Gold or Rose Gold to Indigo or Indigo to, to Ruby Steel. Like for me, I mean, realistically, given I won't be getting, you know, the first, the reward, reward rates anymore, I don't even know if it's worth me staking to get 2% cash back every month anymore. I might be better off staking the coin in the flexible earn rates you know it, it just depends on so many factors now about is it useful for me, to, for me to to have the card still the second thing that's slightly worrying is they pulled out of the champions league sponsorships amongst all these cutbacks so they was in the running to sponsor the champions league however the deal is now dead about a week ago now it's not really too big of a deal but i think there was a time when crypto.com were pumping out sponsorships to f1 to the world cup to all of these things and they basically showed confidence in the fact that they've got a lot of money there. They're promoting massively. However, now they've kind of, it just leaves the question of, can they not afford to pay the money for the sponsorship deal they'd like to have had? And if that is the case, along with, you know, backed up by cutbacks, it suggests that maybe, you know, in this bear market, things aren't as good or as rosy as they once were for crypto.com. So, you know, it's a bit of a sticky one. 
Next up with the NFT NFT side of things, they're now making more money out of everybody on the NFT platform by charging a $3 minting fee for any new NFT that's made, which again, it reduces the incentive for small creators to go on the site, produce work that they've never produced before, mint it for free and then buy other NFTs. It kind of closes the ecosystem off because nobody's going to pay £30,000 to mint a collection of 10,000 NFTs. So they're just going to go to OpenSea on Polygon. You know, they're driving people away by being a tiny bit greedy by trying to take 3%. Just take $3 up front. Take a cut of the of the sale more, you know. So yeah, bit of a sticky one that again, but it goes to show again, they're just trying to make more money off everybody. It disincentivizes creation and growth and taking more money from people um, suggests that they need more money, which is kind of scary. And then finally, the third and final reason why Crypto.com right now is potentially on the ropes is that they cut down the earn rates um, massively, lowering the tier one quota from 30,000 to 3,000. And as I talk about in an upcoming video, by having a lower tier one quota, once you fill up $3,000 of crypto in the earn section, you don't really have that much of an incentive to hold it in crypto.com versus the likes of Binance or your local bank, um, because the bank gives you 3% interest in some, some places now. Um, so you wouldn't hold it for US dollar coin. Again, Binance, you get 2,000 quota on every coin, I believe. Well, not every coin, but a lot of coins. So you'd be better off holding for that tier one quota in Binance than, you know, than crypto.com. So it takes money out of the ecosystem. It takes money out of the whole crypto.com sphere and less earn, less de demand for um, staking Kronos, less demand in the Visa cards for staking Kronos as well. You know, there's just less of an incentive to use the app, less utility. And when there's yes, less utility supply, stays the same most of the time because they don't have any cash to burn CRO but demand goes down because you know you have less reason to hold the coin so there are some big negatives that I think of when I look at crypto.com right, right now um, yeah I think it's one of the biggest crypto exchanges out there they've got 50 million users is it undervalued for 50 million users to have a company worth 3 billion? Is crypto the future? You know, there's a lot of potential still there. You know, I'm not discounting it just yet. It's a household name, simple to use, but it's just a tiny bit of a shame when it was so utility focused and great that it is now no longer not sort of thing. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Comment down below and I'll uh, catch you again soon.